Before you were born, I set you apart. I made you a prophet to the nations. Ah, Lord God, I said, I don't know how to speak because I'm only a child. The Lord responded, don't say I'm only a child. Where I send you, you must go. What I tell you, you must say. Don't be afraid of them because I'm going to rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand, touched my mouth and said to me, I'm putting my words into you. I'm putting my words in your mouth. This very day I appoint you over nations and empires, to dig and pull down, to destroy and demolish, to build and plant. The Lord asked me, What do you see, Jeremiah? I said, A branch of an almond tree. The Lord said, You are right, for I am watching over my word until it is fulfilled. The word of the Lord. Well, hey everyone, this is Bishop Marianne, and I... I uh, want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of this gathering. Thank you for your part, for showing up to join us in this community. I'm really glad that you're here. And let me begin by saying how sorry I am too that so much of your life has been disrupted or reorganized, postponed, uh, canceled because of the pandemic. Um, and I hope that in the midst of all that's changed that you're also um, discovering some new things about yourself and about your ability to adapt and respond and to adjust, that you're learning some new skills, um, that even uh, the way you understand the, the important things in your life are coming into greater focus. And um, one of the things I'd like to talk to you today about is about how, how and when we might experience the presence and the power of God particularly in the times when we need to do something really brave. So I'd like to um, like to tell you about a time in my life uh, when I had to do something brave. Um, and I don't know if at the time I would have said God was leading me or God was guiding me, but I do know that even at the time, um, I didn't feel quite as alone as I would have thought given that what I was doing and the decisions I were making felt uh, really lonely in the sense that I was kind of going against or, um, or stepping away from some of the really important people in my life. Uh, this was when I was 17. And at the time I had been living with my dad and my stepmom and my half brother, who's about nine years younger than I was. And um, life wasn't all that great, actually. And my dad and stepmom were in the process of, of separating and divorcing. And both of them, for um, their own reasons, thought that I should go to live with them. And um, for a whole bunch of reasons that I won't go into, that was not, that was not a good idea. Um, I was attending a church at the time. And um, by myself, it wasn't something that my parents, either of my parents belonged to. And the minister of that church and his family invited me to come and stay with them. And I was really happy to accept. So for about two months, I lived with the minister and his family. Um, and for the most part, I was treated well. Um, they were very kind to me. But I also got to see the minister, who I saw only on Sunday mornings. I got to see him kind of as he was throughout the week and how he treated his family and how he treated those around him. And, and it, it was kind of, um, it was kind of a revelation to me because he seemed like a really different person and not always in a good way. Um, so I was trying to make sense of that. And this was also a church that believed that if you, if anyone didn't accept and believe in Jesus the way they did, um, in exactly the way that they did, that you were not among the saved. And if you weren't among the saved, the biggest um, fear about that or the consequence of that is that when you died, you would go to a place that they called hell. As opposed to those who were, were saved, um, if you died, you would go to a place called heaven and heaven was infinitely better than hell. And I, to be honest, I didn't know what to think of all of that, but I sure as heck, didn't accept the idea that there was only one little tiny narrow path that was acceptable to God and everything
everybody else who wasn't on that path was not going to be and you know wasn't going to be entered into or allowed to enter whatever's waiting for us after we leave this earth but I wasn't in a position where I could actually talk about that with the minister and his family because you know I was living with them and they were authority figures in my life and um but I just wanted to say that all that was kind of swirling through my head even though I wasn't saying very much about it so we I was going on and so I was living with the minister and I was living trying to stay together trying to stay connected to my dad and my stepmom and my brother and um and then it occurred to me um that I had to make a decision and and that that decision was to leave and to ask my mom my my birth mother um whom I hadn't been living with for you know over 10 years if I could live with her which meant a move across the country um, I didn't want to move across country by the way I had really good friends I liked where I was in school. I had a boyfriend that I was uh really in love with. Um and I didn't want to leave. But there was a part of me inside that knew that I had to. Um although I wasn't 100% sure that my mom would say yes. Um and the minister and his family didn't think it was a good idea because they were worried that I would fall from faith because my mom wasn't part of that church, you know. Um and my dad and my stepmom kind of felt betrayed. Um I felt in some ways like I was abandoning my younger brother. But I knew I knew I had to do this thing. And I felt it wasn't just me saying it. There was some other presence, there was some other guidance that I was being given. And so I um so I did it. My mom said yes. And um at age 17, uh, one day I got on a plane all by myself and said goodbye to everything I knew and went to go live with my mom. Um and up to that point in my life it was the bravest thing I'd ever done. And I I also it was a time when I consciously decided against what the adults in my life were saying to me. because i had this other locus of guidance that was coming inside you know um and i i'd like you to think about that that idea of having a kind of a locus of guidance or of authority or of inspiration that comes from the inside that can help you when you're trying to make a brave decision or to do something that you feel is important to do we just heard a story about a young boy whose name was Jeremiah And as you heard the story you 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 remember that um he had the sense that God had spoken to him and was calling him as a young boy to do to do something brave in his life to choose a path of life that would make him a spokesperson for God among all the people of his nation and um and it scared him and the first thing he said to God as you heard is like hey I can't I can't do that um first of all like I'm 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 only a boy And you remember what God said to him which was don't don't say that. Don't don't say that you're only a boy. And and more important, don't imagine that you're by yourself. I'm I'm going to be with you. I'm actually going to put some words in your mouth and you're going to say them. I'm going to guide you. And Jeremiah went on to become one of the most important leaders of his people. Um I by the way, um that decision I made when I was 17 turned out to be one of the most pivotal decisions of my life. Set the course for my life in ways that I couldn't even describe to you. Um so I've no no regrets whatsoever and I'm so glad that I did it. I'm so glad that I trusted that voice inside. And and what I'd like to leave you with today is the idea that there and this and this core conviction that um there are times in your life and it can happen at any time when you're going to feel something inside you stirring you when you're going to even hear maybe a voice or something that feels like a voice telling you that this is a path to take even when really important people in your life are saying something else and all i want to say to you today is that sometimes that's how god works with us um sometimes god connects with us right down at the core of who we are and speaks there or guides there and i want you to be able to trust that 
um, and to be brave when the time comes. And maybe as I'm speaking, you already know what I'm talking about in your own life, that something has already happened or something that's stirring. And if so, I just want to encourage you in that. And maybe this is something that doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now, but I hope that someday you'll remember this when you are in a place where you have a sense that it's up, for you, it's up to you um, to do something brave for yourself or for someone else. And you're not getting a lot of external encouragement about this. You may be getting some, but not a lot. And a whole lot more to do or say nothing or to just keep on going the path you're going. But it might be God. It might be the Spirit of Jesus guiding you, directing you, saying to you, hey, I need you. Or I, I want for you or for someone else for you to do or say this thing. Um, because that's, that's how the world changes for the better. And that's how we can live our lives, even in the midst of all of the things that are beyond our control, with a sense of confidence that we're going to be okay. Because we're not alone. We're not alone. That God has the ability to help us and to guide us and to see us through and to make even the hardest of situations okay. And sometimes more than okay. Sometimes a stepping stone to something really amazing for ourselves or for the world. So... I hope, it's, um, I hope it's a great week. I hope it's a, a good summer for you. Know that even though we're not in the same room and I can't see your faces, that I am praying for you and cheering you on and trusting that when that voice or that presence or that nudge speaks, that you will know and you will be given all that you need, just as Jeremiah was given all that he needed. You will be given all that you need to step out encourage to do or say something brave and to trust to the depth of your being that God is with you, God is for you, and that um, with God and by grace, you are poised to do amazing things in your life and in this world. So take good care. Um, I hope to hear from you sometime and to see you sometime soon. Amen.